here we go. Hey everybody, it's me, Stuart. Today we're going to be reading a story about Monsters, Inc. called Christmas in Monstropolis. Ooh, I wonder how they celebrate Christmas in Monstropolis. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Mike Wazowski was Monsters, Inc.'s top life collector. But one day he had other things on his mind besides work. Mike walked through the busy streets of Monstropolis. Come on, he called to his best friend, Sully. We can't be late for the Christmas committee meeting. I'm in charge of getting the whole city ready. Ooh, sounds like a big job. Mike had big plans. He pictured Monstropolis glowing from top to bottom. And to cap it off, he planned to set up a huge Christmas tree in the center of the city. We'll have a special tree lighting ceremony on Christmas Eve, he told his team with the camera crew there to broadcast the event live. Sully nervously looked over Mike's plans. This is going to take a lot of laugh power, Mikey, he said. I'm not sure. But Mike was determined. People will be talking about the great job the Christmas committee did for years, he exclaimed. Before long, teams of monsters had spread across the city, hanging lights and putting up decorations. Maybe we can skip some of these lights, Sully said. You know, to save energy. Skip lights, Mike said. No, we need more lights. Smitty, Needleman, he shouted to two nearby monsters. Double the lights in the city dump. Oh man, he's planning to make this a big event. Soon Christmas Eve arrived. All around Monstropolis, lights shone so brightly that passersby had to squint and shield their eyes. In the city center, Hundreds of monsters gathered to witness the tree light. TV crews set up cameras to capture the event. See, Sully, Mike said, the power is just fine. And you were worried. Suddenly, all the Christmas lights went out. Mike looked around in alarm. It wasn't just his decorations that had turned off. The power had gone out across the whole city. Uh-oh, that's not good. What's going on, Wazowski? One monster yelled angrily. Yeah, another monster cried. We want answers. And lights, someone else bellowed. The crowd began to murmur angrily. Don't worry, folks, Mike shouted above the growing noise. Just a little hiccup. We'll have this fixed in a jiffy. Sully turned to Mike. The factory is closed for the holidays, he whispered. Everyone's on vacation. How exactly are we going to generate enough power? We're going to need some substitute life collectors, Mike said. He scanned the crowd for familiar faces. Okay, let's see. Who looks funny? His gaze settled on Smitty and Needleman. Hey, you two, he called. Over here. Sully and Mike quickly ushered their new life collectors to Monsters, Inc. It was up to the four of them to turn the city's power back on. Yeah. I bet they can do it. At the factory, Sully stopped short. He gazed at the hundreds of doors hanging from the conveyor belt. Without power, Sully would need to pull them into place himself. We've got our work cut out for us, he said, doing some quick calculations. We'll probably need six cans to power up the city and have enough power left over for the tree lighting. And we've got about an hour to pull it off. Smitty and Needleman looked nervous. Well, well, what can we do, Mr. Wazowski? Needleman asked, his voice shaken. Well, well, we don't know any j, j jokes Don't worry, Mike said. I got a million of them. He quickly scribbled down some jokes and handed them to the monsters. And remember, it's all in the delivery. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Mike ran through door after door. What's a monster's favorite Christmas carol? He asked the girl. Jingle yells. What do monster elves learn in school, he yelled. The alphabet. Which monster plays holiday tricks? Frankenstein. That's two cans, Sully called out as Mike stepped back onto the laugh floor. That's all? Mike slumped to the ground. I'm ruined, he groaned. If we don't get enough power, I'll be the laughing stock of Monstropolis. Sully tried to cheer Mike up, but he knew they had a long way to go. Mike raced in and out of rooms. With half an hour left, they had filled only four cans. 
In their rooms, Smitty and Needleman were getting nowhere. What's red and white and green? Needleman nervously asked one boy. Smitty answered in a flat voice. Santa swimming through seaweed. The two looked up hopefully. The boy had fallen asleep. Yeah, I would too. That was, that was pretty bad on the delivery, huh? <laughs> you stink, Smitty said as he and Needleman went through another door. I stink, Needleman's voice rose, waking the girl whose room they had entered. Needleman gave Smitty a little push. You're the one who smells. Smitty tried to push Needleman back, but Needleman stepped out of the way and Smitty tumbled to the floor with a thud. The girl howled with laughter. I don't know what you just did in there, but it's working, Sully said when the two stepped back onto the laugh floor. You just filled half a can. The new laugh collectors headed through another door. Mike and Sully heard thumps, crashes, and laughter. Curious, they stopped and poked their heads in. I'm on a row, Needleman cried, jumping up and down. In a flash, Mike tossed a rotten banana to Smitty. Or maybe you're on a banana pill, Smitty said, gulping down a banana and throwing the pill. Needleman stepped on it and slid across the room. The boy laughed so hard he filled an entire can. Wow, them guys are doing pretty good now. One more to go, Sully said, and we've only got five minutes left. Good thing I saved the best for last, Mike said, hurrying through the nearest store. What's red and hairy, has eight legs, and guide Santa's sleigh, he asked a group of cousins. Rudolph the red-nosed spider. The room shook with laughter. Six cans, Sully called. Let's hope it's enough. Tree lighting, here we come. The four monsters raced through the streets. The lights had come back on in the city, but what about the Christmas tree? Had they collected enough laughs to light that too? By the time they reached the city center, monsters stood shoulder to shoulder, waiting for the lighting. Mike crossed his fingers. He knew all eyes were on him. Taking a deep breath, he flipped the switch, but nothing happened. Uh-oh, that's not good. Uh, Mike, Smitty said, holding up the cord of the tree lights. It wasn't plugged in. Needleman quickly pushed the plug into a nearby socket. The lights flicked on. Everyone gasped in wonder. You did it, Mike, Sully said. Mike shook his head. You mean we did it. Then he pulled Smitty and Needleman up to face the cheering crowd. Merry Christmas, Monstropolis. They all shouted, yay. The end. Wow, that was a fun story about Monsters, Inc. Mike was in charge of setting up all the Christmas decorations for Monstropolis and getting the big tree lit. They went to do it, but all the power went out in the city, so they had to fill up some laugh cans. Smitty and Needleman weren't too funny at first, but they figured out how to make the kids laugh, and they filled up all the canisters, and lit up the town and the Christmas tree. Yeah, teamwork. All right, well thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. See ya. Thanks for watching. See you next time.